remember learning how to drive stick? We're sure whatever three pedal beater you had inevitably took a whipping as you lurched, lunged, and stalled your way to manual mastery. Luckily, most of us can say that inadvertently abusing our gearbox ended after those very first cringeworthy shifts. Like a baby learning to walk, you quickly learn how to change gears more gracefully with just a little extended practice. But that's not to say you can't still screw up a shift. And one of the more painful things you can do with your gearbox, aside from that money shift we talked about, is to smoke a clutch. On today's episode, smoking a clutch. Spoiler alert, a smoked clutch is not exactly as tasty or aromatic as smoked brisket. Smoking your clutch is about as bad for your car as a plate full of smoked barbecue is for your calorie count. You bungle a three pedal dance just right and congratulations, you have yourself a smoked clutch. So what exactly is a smoked clutch? Well, that's a great question. But before we answer that, let's recap what a clutch is in the first place and why it's so critical to changing gears. Think of your clutch as sort of a on-demand coupling. It holds the engine to a manual transmission until you push down the clutch pedal to initiate a gear change. That might have you wondering, why is a clutch even necessary in the first place then? Now, can't power just flow directly from the engine into the transmission? Heck, why can't the engine power go straight to the wheels? Man, I'm making record time. If only I had some place to be. The automotive engineers would love if that were possible. But the fact is that internal combustion engines operate efficiently only in a narrow band of engine speed known as the power band. To take advantage of that power band at different road speeds, you need a transmission, which is essentially an assortment of gears that engine power can be routed through. Depending on which gear is engaged, the transmission can step up or step down the engine power according on your need for speed. Now here's the thing with the transmission though. You don't wanna change gears with the engine power actively flowing through it, as doing so would cause your transmission components to suffer some pretty extreme wear and tear. Now imagine trying to remove or attach a nozzle to a running high pressure fire hose, and you can understand why cutting power to the gearbox while you swap cogs is a good idea. Now what needs to happen then is that the engine needs to be temporarily decoupled from the transmission while you select a different gear. That's what we've been looking for. That's where the clutch comes in. As far as automotive hardware goes, the clutch is relatively a simple device. It essentially consists of three main parts, a clutch disc, a pressure plate, and a diaphragm spring. The clutch disc is located on the forwardmost edge of the clutch, facing the engine. Its high friction surface grips the flywheel, which is a large toothed disc bolted to the end of the crankshaft. When the clutch disc is kissing the flywheel, power can flow smoothly from the engine to the transmission. Behind the clutch disc is a pressure plate, and as the name suggests, the pressure plate applies pressure to the clutch disc in order to keep it slammed up against the flywheel. Now, you might be asking, why does the pressure plate look like a giant metal spaghettio rather than a solid round disc? and that's because the middle is hollowed out for the diaphragm spring. The diaphragm spring is essentially the muscle behind all of this clamping action. This is no ordinary slinky. Unlike a traditional coiled metal spring, the diaphragm spring is a nearly flat circle. Its springingness is provided by a number of tapering metal prongs, known as fingers, which are mounted on the perimeter of the circular ring and point inwards. The fulcrum point is where the fingers attach to the perimeter. Now push in on the fingers and the edge of the diaphragm spring flexes outward. So here's how it all kind of comes together. First, you push down on your clutch pedal. That sets in motion something called the clutch fork, which is a lever that pushes the fingers of the diaphragm spring forward toward the flywheel. This causes the outer edge of the diaphragm spring to flex in the opposite direction, toward the transmission. As the outer portion of the diaphragm spring moves rearward, the pressure plate slackens its clamping force on the clutch disc. Relieved of this pressure, the clutch disc can now disengage from the flywheel. It isn't hard to ensure all this happens properly. All you have to do is push down on the clutch firmly and completely every time you need to change gears. That said, life isn't always black and white. There may be times when you accidentally or purposely do what's known as riding the clutch, keeping sustained partial pressure on the clutch pedal. Now it might be inevitable in certain situations, like if you're caught in slow moving traffic on a steep uphill, but it's generally to be avoided if possible. Now why you may ask? Well, that's because this is an easy way to smoke your clutch. All right, with that out of the way, now what is a smoked clutch? In short, it's a fried clutch. It's caused by mercilessly riding your third pedal, which forces the clutch disc to somewhat, but not entirely, decouple from the flywheel. And that's bad news. Why? Because the clutch will quickly burn up in this half in, half out position. And when we say burn, we mean quite literally burn. The heat generated from this partially engaged position can quite literally torch the friction material that enables your clutch to, well, clutch. You'll know when you've hit that point when you start smelling burnt toast through the air vents and see smoke emerging from under your vehicle. Don't take any of this to mean that you should always treat your third pedal as an on-off switch though. 
Now, while that would be great for clutch wear, it just isn't feasible. In fact, partially engaging the clutch for brief periods of time is beneficial in certain situations, as doing so allows you to more precisely feather power from the engine to the transmission. Now, you probably find yourself doing this without even realizing it, and when you nose your car into a parking space or start off on a steep hill. But what don't you want to do? Treat the thing like a footrest. And take it from us, that's the easiest way to burn through your clutch in no time. Ride a clutch aggressively enough and you can quite possibly condense tens of thousands of miles of wear into one season of driving. You can also smoke a clutch by giving the engine major throttle without fully backing off of the third pedal. Now you might see this with panicked newbies facing their first steep uphill. As they remove their right foot from the brake, the car begins to roll backwards and they instinctively punch the gas while continuing to slowly, slowly, slowly release the clutch. Meanwhile, the engine is singing out at 3,000 or 4,000 RPMs and the clutch disc is howling for mercy. A few of these practice starts in quick succession could generate enough heat and friction to in fact smoke a clutch. Now luckily, these couplings are pretty hardy and they can even put up with this level of abuse. Though anytime you smoke a clutch, you are shortening its lifespan. The worst offenders might see their clutch totally fail in as little as 10,000 or 20,000 miles. So you'll know when the clutch completely fails because your car will basically be DOA. And here's how it actually usually plays out. After reliving your favorite Fast and the Furious scene one too many times, you might notice some slippage, which is when the clutch seems to be literally slipping off the flywheel rather than firmly clamping against it. When this happens, you might notice symptoms like laggy acceleration or inconsistent RPMs, even while you're traveling at a steady speed. That's because power flow through the failing clutch is becoming more and more choppy. As the slippage worsens, these symptoms become more and more apparent. At some point, the clutch pedal will start behaving funny and the pedal will grow increasingly spongy in feel. And you might notice a different engagement point, that point while depressing the clutch pedal when you sense the friction disc actually making contact with the flywheel. Now, if you ignore all these symptoms, total failure will occur, which is when the friction material on the clutch disc is pretty much entirely worn away. Without that grabbing material, the pressure plate can't keep the clutch disc securely pressed against the flywheel. Now that means power can't flow into the transmission and onto the wheels, leaving your car entirely bricked. The only way you're getting anywhere is if you start pushing or call a AAA tow. Now, if you're a bit luckier, the clutch might fail in the engaged position. When this happens, your transmission won't decouple from the flywheel, even if you depress the clutch pedal. Your car remains drivable. However, changing gears won't be easy. You'll have to float a shift or shift without a clutch. Now, regardless of how your clutch fails, don't expect to be driving anywhere other than your buddy's house or your favorite repair shop. And that is if you can drive it at all. Let's just recap here. The clutch is a coupler that mates the engine to the transmission. It's tasked with cutting engine power at the flick of your left foot so that you can change gears without horsepower and torque rushing through the gearbox like two bulls in a china shop. I know what you're thinking. A clutch gets smoked when you leave it for too long in a partially engaged position, an in-between state that results in so much friction and heat that you begin to literally fry the friction material on the clutch disc. Now this isn't always catastrophic, but make no mistake that doing this repeatedly will reduce the lifespan of your clutch significantly. When your clutch finally does begin to fail, you'll experience worsening slippage, a spongy third pedal, and other not fun symptoms. Eventually, your clutch will fail completely. Now for your sake, we hope it fails in the engaged position, which at least leaves your car somewhat drivable. Now, the bottom line here, it's pretty straightforward. Just don't ride your clutch. It's the easiest way to avoid smoking your clutch or suffering premature clutch failure. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share this one with your friends. We will see you in the next one.